Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the second part of our saving system. We will pick up where we left off and start by creating the item database script. This is what will allow us to retrieve any item simply providing their ID. The item database will be a scriptable object and, as always, that requires the create asset menu attribute so that we can create assets of this type in our project folders. Since this is a database of items, we will need a data structure to hold items. I'm going to make it an array because I believe this is going to be fairly immutable during runtime. And now we need a way to retrieve items from this database. So let's simply create a new public method that returns an item, and I will call it getItemReference, where we must supply the item ID, and we will retrieve the item that corresponds to this ID. So we just need to search for it in the array. For each item in the array of items, we'll check if the ID of the item is equal to the ID that we supplied. And if it is, we will return that item. If we reach the end of the loop and we didn't find any item with this ID, we'll just return null. Just for convenience, I will also create a second method that also receives an item, but this time it's going to be called getItemCopy. It will also require us to supply an item ID. We want to retrieve the item that corresponds to that ID, so we can simply use the getItemReference method that we created just now, and if that item is null, we can return null, otherwise we can return a copy of that item. And now for the missing pieces in our item save manager, we will add a new serialized field variable. This will be of type item database. And now we can use the item database to retrieve the items that correspond to the IDs that we had saved. So we can use item database. And since these are fresh copies of items that we want to add new to the inventory, we use the get item copy method, passing in the item ID in the saved slot variable. In the load equipment method, we need to do the same thing in the item variable. So this already allows us to create a new item database asset in our project folders. And as long as we remember to drag and drop those items into the item database, we will be able to retrieve them from the item save manager. However, this process can be a little bit tedious because we have to manually drag the items to the item database and whenever we add new items, we will need to repeat that process over and over. So let's make our lives a lot easier and implement a few methods that will allow us to retrieve all the items in our project folders automatically into the item database. We'll start out with the following method. This is a slightly modified version of this answer at Unity Answers website. So let's analyze it and figure out how it works. So this is a generic function that will find all assets of the specified type. We can specify that type by writing it between the less than and bigger than signs, just like we do for lists, for example. It will return an array of objects of that type, and it is only valid if the type that we specify is a subclass of unityEngine.object. The first thing that this method needs to do is convert the type that we supplied to a string. After that, we will need to remove the UnityEngine namespace from the type if it exists. The reason for that is because the next method call, findAssets, which receives the type as a string to filter by, will simply not work if the filter contains the Unity Engine namespace. For example, if we want to search for objects of the type material, doing type of material to string will return Unity Engine.material. And if we supply that string into the find assets, it will not find any materials. This will only work if we supply the string material. So we need to remove the Unity Engine part. So after converting the type of the object to a string, we'll need to call assetDatabase.findAssets. We supply the parameter t colon 
and then the type of the object that we need to search by, and it will return a string array with the globally unique identifiers of all of the assets of that type. The way that this method uses to filter is the exact same way that we can use to search for assets in our project folders. If we say t colon item, the Unity editor will show us all scriptable objects of type item. As soon as we have all of the IDs, we can create a new array that has as many elements as there were IDs. Then we loop through all of the IDs. For each ID, we use the asset database to get the path corresponding to that ID, and then we load the asset at that path. We save the loaded asset at the corresponding index of the assets array. Finally, we return the assets array. But we're still not done. Let's make this method a little bit more versatile. There is a version of the find assets method that receives an array of strings that are the folders where you want it to search for assets. This allows you even more control in case you don't want to have an item database that contains all of the items in your project. You might want to separate it into several different item databases that each get different sets of items. So let's add a new input parameter and we're going to use the params keyword and this is a special C# -sharp keyword that allows you to input a variable number of input parameters and the compiler will automatically convert all of those input parameters into a single array. And now we need to replace the asset database.findassets line with the following. First, we'll check if the content of the folders array is valid. In other words, we'll check if it's null or if it doesn't have any elements in it. And in that case, we'll need to use the version of the method that does not receive the folders argument. If we do have anything in the folders array, then we will use those folders to filter the search for our assets. And now we can create a method that will load all of our item assets into the items array of the item database. We will tell it to search in the assets slash items folder, because that's where we have been storing all of our items. And now we need to figure out when to call the load items method. So one of the obvious places would be the onValidate function. And the other situation where we want our load items method to run is when we add new items to our project. And in order to do that, we can do the following. In the onEnable method, we will register with the project changed event from the editor application class, and in the onDisable method, we will unregister with that same event. The editor application class is a class that is only available while in the editor, and as the name of the event implies, this event will be called whenever something in the project changes, whether it is you add a new item, a new script, a new folder, or when you remove them. So this will call the load items method so that we can update the items in the item database. And lastly, in order to avoid compilation errors when we make a build of our game, we will need to surround all of this code with a platform dependent compilation statement by saying if Unity Editor. And at the bottom of these functions, we need to put the end if tag. This statement essentially makes this code only compile when we are in the Unity Editor. When we make a build, it's as if this code never existed. We will also need to surround the using Unity Editor statement with the same script conditional compilation symbols. So now, if we come into Unity and we select our item database scriptable object, we can see that it has automatically filled up with all of the items. And if we add a new item, we can see that it is automatically added to our item database. And removing that item will also automatically remove it from the item database. Awesome. And last but not least, we can finally add the item save manager to our scene. Let's add it under a new game object. We can drag the reference to the item database into the corresponding variable. And to finish all the programming that we need to do for this video, we will finally come into the character script. We'll need to add a new serialized field variable. 
This time we'll add a item save manager. Then we'll go to the end of the start method and we will call the load equipment and load inventory methods. And in the on destroy method, we will call the corresponding save methods. And then in the player game object, we'll need to drag the item save manager to the corresponding variable. Because we renamed our inventory and equipment panel variables, the references have been lost, so we will need to re add them. And finally, we can play our scene and test our new implemented save system. We can equip a few items, and if we leave play mode and we come back in again, we can see that the items in the equipment panel are being loaded correctly, but the items in the inventory are not. This is because we are setting starting items in the inventory script in the start method, and we are also loading the inventory in the character script in the start method. So, because of script execution order issues in Unity, it's probably overwriting the loaded items. So, we need to change the start method in the inventory script into an awake method. And because this is overriding the item container's own start method, we'll need to use Visual Studio's renaming to rename it in both places. And finally, we have a fully functioning saving system. This is it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one.